Let me begin by quoting a, uh, an insight that was expressed by Lyndon Johnson when he was president of the U.S. Uh, he referred to what he called the bourbon strategy in the South, Re bourbon referring not to the whiskey, but to the white ruling class, the, the bourbons uh, in the South. And he pointed out that it was to their advantage to have racial discrimination uh, continue in the United States. And that was one reason they fought against uh, the civil rights and desegregation movements. The reason it was to their advantage was because as long as blacks were placed at the bottom of the social and economic status system in America, it gave the poor whites in the South uh, somebody they could feel superior to, somebody they could feel more affluent than, more respected than, and uh, therefore uh, they would be less resentful uh, uh, toward the rich whites who were the people who in fact were exploiting them. Now, this may sound like a conspiracy theory, uh, and uh, to, but to some extent there was a conspiracy. There, uh, there is abundant documentation of the degree to which uh, the more affluent white populations in a number of southern states during the years of greatest turmoil when the racial discrimination system in the South was being most vigorously uh, uh, contested, um, where the rich whites really financed and sponsored and organized uh, efforts by the white working class to commit the worst atrocities against blacks who were attempting to uh, uh, undo the system of discrimination mm -hmm. against blacks and against even their white supporters who were trying to, to help the blacks. There are groups in the white community who are unaware of the degree to which they've been exploiting and, and uh, persecuting blacks because they themselves feel exploited and persecuted because they're trying to make it. They're afraid of becoming unemployed. So they would fight against uh, uh, blacks having equal opportunity because at that point they have more people competing for the same jobs. So you can see how this how it works in, in that sense. In, in a larger sense, I would say that the people who are most aware of persecution are those who are being persecuted. The persecutors are often unaware how, how cruel they're being uh, I think uh, in many cases um, it's not fully conscious. Um, it's like if you hurt, you're aware the pain tells you something bad has happened. If you're not hurting, you're less likely to notice it.